Why would you make micro lectures and what can you expect? This video tells you that the effect of a single micro lesson is limited, that the effect increases when they are more interactive, more engaging and better designed and that making the learning visible is important. The purpose of these short lectures is self-directed learning. To learn you need a brain. New information arrives in a part of the brain, the working memory. We've got all a limited amount of working memory, so when we have to handle information in more than one way, the load gets heavier and harder to manage. We can store up to 7 items during 20 seconds in the working memory. But this includes prior knowledge that we bring in also. This is important making a micro lecture. The good thing about micro lectures is that students can select lessons they want to watch and they can move through them at their own pace, stopping and replaying as needed in order to understand the content. At the same time, you have to be concise in your presentation. A micro lecture can focus on a single important point and thus providing an opportunity for self-study, for concepts or information that may be difficult to understand. Because a micro lecture is short, there is hardly time for complexity or depth. The average adult reads a lesson book at 10 pages per hour. It is not possible to explain all details of these 10 pages in a 10 minutes micro lecture. And still, making a good micro lecture is time consuming. Your time, that is. What can you expect of a micro lecture? John Hattie, professor of education at the University of Melbourne, undertook a meta-analysis of the effect of 138 factors on educational success or failure. The effect size of web-based learning is low, but the effect size is better if the instruction becomes more interactive, more engaging and, in general, better designed. What learners do makes the biggest difference. Learners actively searching, exploring and making things score the best results. So, learning results are depending on how the micro lecture activates the learner. What are good steps to follow? Leave the lesson book where it is. It is better to first start with these five steps. Step 1. Define a specific goal. What does the learner know or want in the end? Or do you want an opinion or a skill? Step 2. How will you measure this goal? And with what level will you be satisfied? This is where the learning becomes visible. You probably want to invest your time in an effective learning approach. Beware, just watching the micro lecture is not a learning goal, but making successful an online test, for instance, could be a goal. Step 3. What learning activity is necessary to get to your goal? Remember, interactive and engaging material will help the student to learn. Step 4. How will you use images and verbal explanation in the micro lecture? If you are unsure, watch the micro lecture How to Optimize Students' Learning. Remember that the combination of images and verbal explanation is superior to all other combinations of text, picture and spoken word. This is because of the limited capacity of the working memory. And then step 5. What is your role after the learner has worked with the micro lesson? Professor Hetty gives additional advice on step 5. The use of computers is more effective when there is a diversity of teaching strategies and there are multiple opportunities for learning, for instance deliberative practice or increasing time on task. When the student and not the teacher is in control of learning. Also when peer learning is optimized and finally when feedback is optimized. And also bear in mind that according to the research, the use of micro lectures is more effective when there is teacher pre-training to use them as a teaching and learning tool. So, why would you make micro lectures and what can you expect? 
Although the effect is low, the effect can be enhanced by interactivity, engagement and a well-designed form. Micro-lectures can also play a role in a diversity of teaching strategies.